Hello, my name's Liv. I'm going to read you your bedtime story tonight. It's based around the parable of the banquet, um, but it's all based in the jungle and animals. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Long ago in a jungle, there lived the king of Malakon. The king was strong and bold, a lion who had ruled from the beginning of time. He was older than the trees and wiser than the owls. He was a good king kind and generous to all his subjects, and his kingdom covered the whole of the earth. One day the king called his servants together. Among them was a monkey who had grown up in the king's palace, called Koli. The time has come for my son to be married, the king announced. Go throughout the kingdom and invite all to attend. The next day Koli and the servants left the king's palace and began their journey. He couldn't wait to see the animal's excitement at such a grand party invitation. He first approached a zebra. The zebra was strong and powerful, wild and free. No one could tame him or tell him what to do. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley proudly announced. You are invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. The king? You must be mistaken, little friend, the, um, the zebra snorted with wind rustling his mane. I have no king. With those words, he charged away. Next, Coley saw a giraffe. Coley was amazed by her beauty and the height of her neck. She ate leaves from the top of a large tree. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley called up to her. You're invited to the wedding feast for the king's son. But there was no reply. Coley cleared his throat and began again. I say, beautiful giraffe, I bring you greetings in the name of... I heard you, the giraffe snapped, without even looking down. I don't understand, Coley commented. I don't talk to animals who are shorter than me. The giraffe snuffed and began eating again. But leave me, little one, the tall animal demanded, the stomp of her hoof. Coley was disheartened, but continued his journey. Next he came to a hippopotamus. The hippo was big, fat and happy. Hello, Mr Monkey, he called out from his pool of water. Greetings in. Then Coley paused. The hippo was so fat. Could he fit through the door to the king's palace? Would he break a chair if he sat on it? What if he ate too much? I'd better not invite him, Coley thought, and continued on his way. Then he met a jaguar. He was the fastest animal in the jungle. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley announced. You're invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. A feast? The jaguar coolly commented, link it, licking his lips and looking at the little monkey. I like to feast. Then come to the king's palace and... But I have no time for such a journey, the jaguar said. I have work to do. Places to go, animals to eat, I mean meat, he stuttered. Coley paused for a moment. The jaguar's eyes glared at him. I had better be going, Coley said, quickly stepping away. But wouldn't you like to be dinner, I mean to have dinner with me tonight? Not tonight, he said, disappearing into a bush. Coley next encountered a sloth, hanging in a tree. But the sloth looked so tired and he moved so slowly. It would take him a day just to climb a tree, and he talked at the same pace. A conversation with him would take an hour. He'd never make it to the banquet in time, Coley thought, and I don't have time to invite him. So he left the sloth without saying a word. Next, the monkey encountered a pig, but again this animal seemed an unlikely candidate for the king's table. Just look at him. He's covered in mud. Coley told himself, he might leave pig prints all over the palace, and he's ugly too. Just look at those dirty teeth. Who would want him at the banquet? So Coley left the pig. Next, Coley happened upon a skunk. It was black and fluffy, with a huge white stripe down its tail. Coley paused and eyed it for a moment. Would a skunk be welcome at the king's table, he pondered. And, continue, and concluded that the smell might cause the others to lose their appetite. So Coley passed by the skunk with a simple hello. 
but no mention of the king's beast. Coley soon saw an old rhinoceros. His legs were stout and strong, his shoulders were broad and his neck was powerful. The horn on his nose revealed his age and authority. Greetings in the name of the king, kind rhinoceros, rhinoceros, Coley proclaimed. You are invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. King? What king? said the rhino. His deep voice rumbled as he spoke. The king of Malacrom, responded the monkey. King of Malacrom? After a pause, he continued, look, little friend, the king of Malacrom is just a fairy tale. Coley was shocked. But I've seen him. I grew up in his palace. I think you've been drinking too much sour coconut juice, little monkey. But Mr. Rhino, I haven't had any coconut juice. Well, he said slowly, maybe somebody hit you on the head. But, but. Now run along, little friend, the old rhino said, as he slowly turned and walked away. And quit drinking that, that sour coconut juice. The jungle doesn't have a king. Coley stood for a while, still confused by the rhino. Then with a sad heart, he sat down beneath a coconut tree. The time for his return had come. His journey had been unsuccessful. He was really sad. What would he tell the king? With his head hanging low, he started to walk back to the palace. As Coley approached the palace, he could hear cheers and laughter and smell the feast being prepared. Animals were scurrying everywhere. Cooks were cooking, bakers were baking, butlers, well, were doing whatever butlers do. Everyone was busy and everyone was excited. Surely this would be a feast like no other in history. Cheers greeted the monkey as he entered the palace gate. Welcome back, Cody, they would say. Did you have a pleasant journey? Well, it was interesting, he would reply and hasten away. Coley, a voice gently roared behind him. Coley froze and sadly turned to face the king. How was your journey? The king asked. Not good, my king. I invited the animals, but he paused for, before continuing. But none are coming. The king seemed unmoved by this disappointing mood. Did you invite all the animals? He questioned, raising one eyebrow. Well, not exactly, the monkey said in embarrassment. I was, I was afraid the hippopotamus might break a chair. And the sloth was so slow that I didn't think he could make it in time. The pig was really muddy and the skunk smelled. I didn't think they would wel be welcome here. Coley the lion said, placing his huge paw on the monkey's shoulder. You might be right. The hippo might break a chair. The sloth might be too slow. The pig might leave mud tracks everywhere. The skunk smell might even ruin some appetite, but they are all welcome at my table. Just because they look and smell different does not make them bad. If they are willing to make the journey, they are welcome in my palace, said the king. Do I still have time to invite them, Coley asked. If you leave today, you will have time. Without a moment's hesitation, the little monkey began his second journey into the jungle. This time he passed the zebra playing in a field and the tall giraffe who was still eating from the top of the tree. As fast as he could, he went to the pool of water where he had met the hippo. Hello, Mr. Monkey. A voice came from the water. Coley turned in time to see the hippo's head rise from its shaded resting place. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley announced, as proud as when he first began inviting animals. You are invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. How wonderful, the hippo exclaimed, shaking the water. I haven't been to a wedding feast for years. I'd love to come. Then Coley quickly passed the jaguar who called out from a distance, Good day, tasty monkey. I mean, tasty monkey. Would you like to stay for lunch? Not today, the monkey cried, disappearing again into the thicket. He soon found the sloth, still hanging from the same branch in the same tree. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley announced. You're invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. The sloth quietly snored. 
Coley cleared his throat and began again louder. Greetings, sleepy sloth. The sloth starred, stirred with a start and then looked down at the monkey. Hello, little monkey, he said with slow, slurred speech. You're invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. The sloth yawned. A wedding feast? That's me. That means for me it's time to wake up. So you'll come, Coley said excitedly. I'll be there. Do you think I could take a nap when it's over? Sure, Coley said as he raced away to find the pig. Soon Coley found a trail of muddy pig prints. He followed them until he came to the pig, who was rubbing his tusk against a fallen log. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley announced. You're invited to a wedding feast for king's son. Splendid, the pig proclaimed. I might even take a bath. Got to look good for the king, you know. Next, Coley found a skunk. Greetings in the name of the king, Coley announced. You're invited to a wedding feast for the king's son. You want me at the wedding feast, even though I smell? The king specifically sent me to invite you, Coley said. Then I'll come, and I might even put on some perfume. The day of the feast came. Many guests arrived. The hippo broke the first chair he sat in, but still enjoyed himself. The sloth arrived in time as well, and managed to stay awake the entire dinner. The pig took a bath, but still left muddy footprints everywhere he went. The skunk put on some perfume, but it only made him smell worse. Yet the king didn't care what they looked like or smelled like. They were his guests and he treated each of them with honour. They would always be welcome at his table. In this story, the King of Malachron represents God, the King of Kings, who welcomes all who come to him, whether you're tall or short, young or old, whether you have a long nose and big toes or little feet and lots of meat. No matter what colour hair you have, no matter what colour your skin may be, even if you smell bad, you're still welcome at God's table. Good night.